Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. I think it seems to be going kind of slow. Wife might be watching Netflix. Anyway, yeah, that's going to have to stop. So it's going to get hot in this room. Anyway, guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Yo. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, how's everybody doing? I'm going to pull out a bunch of comic books that I got that I'm like extremely excited about. I'm not talking about the new ones for the for the week. Forget that. Now I'm talking about like a whole bunch of crazy comic books that I found. Ooh, grail type comics and everything. Dude, I got a fat stack. I'm talking like daddy fat stacks over here. Who the heck wrote that? That wasn't was that Big Boy? That was Big Boy. Big Boy made that. <laughs> daddy fat stacks. Okay, so we're going to start off with I think that was his first or second solo album anyway. Sean, what's up? Uh, Tom confirmed Eternals would be in Jason Aaron's Avengers. Nice! Which means... See, I'm trying to throw up a bunch of Deadpool characters. I have to go and see Deadpool. I haven't seen that yet. <sighs> wonder if I've got time to go and see that tonight. That would probably be suicide. I was thinking about seeing it Friday morning, but it was too late for that. Crap. i got to go and see Deadpool 2. Anyway, I want to do a bunch of characters from Deadpool 2. I got... Uh, domino up. Yeah. Um, I, I've made Black Tom Cassidy. I just have to actually, you know, when Tuesday comes up, throw him up, but we'll see. Uh, somebody can let me know if he was actually in the uh, the movie or not, because I could avoid wasting my time and just put up somebody else instead, because I really want to do the Eternals, and I actually want to do each of the individual Celestials, because they do have their own stories. What's up, Power to the People? Isaiah Quinn, what's going on? Uh, Bullseye coming to Daredevil Season 3. Yes, yes, I saw that, but I've already got uh, Bullseye explained in a minute up, so psh, I'm good. Um, <laughs> I'm actually happy with that. Thomas Corsantino, what's up, cuz? Uh, haven't seen Deadpool yet? Okay, no big worries, no big worries. Also, it's confirmed they will celebrate issue 700 Avengers. They should. Okay, talking about Centennial issues. Well, not Centennial, but check this out, man. I got Gotham by Gaslight. I'm very happy by that. This is the very first Elseworlds book. Happy about that. And, uh, oh, look what they threw in on the back. I got Justice League number one. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, this is actually the issue. I wonder if I can actually find it. I believe that this is the one from the 90s. I'll bet you I can actually find this one really quick. Like, there's a whole stack to go through, but, oh, man. Yeah, so, like, Mr. Miracle's in here, which is just freaking awesome. Uh, oh, the Young All-Stars. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people in here i probably got to get to. Anyway, um, I don't. maybe this is not the issue. I could have sworn this was where they went, and there's, like, uh, there's actual mutants, like Storm and Wolverine, if I remember correctly, were actually burned at the stake in this issue. Am I wrong? Was this not the issue? I'm positive that it was. Oh, I really hate for me to be wrong. Like, this is the specific reason why I got this one, because I wanted to talk about it, but it looks like not. Oh, that's just disappointing. That is actually epically disappointing. Friggin' A, man. Huh. I was so certain. Oh, well, so I guess I got the wrong comic then. Oh, well, it is what it is. But that would have been interesting if a page wasn't, like, stuck together. Okay, you know what? Whatever. It is what it is. So, I got <laughs> these two comics. Let me put those to the side. Let's see. Uh, I got some uh, issue number... Ouch. I hate when they stick them all together. Here's Daredevil versus um, Sabretooth. That was an interesting issue. Here's the first appearance of Bullet in issue number 250 of Daredevil. And inside is actually... That is... That is highly disrespectful that I pay for shipping like that, and they're going to try and save money by saving Mylar bags. Well, I will not be sh uh, buying from you anymore. But inside should be the, yes, the Wolverine appearance in the uh, Daredevil comic. This was issue 258. So, and yes, uh, what do you call it? This is actually, a, the Sabretooth is actually a continuation of the Mutant Massacre, which... Uh, make no mistake, I'm going to have to cover that sometime soon. Um, Iron Man, issue number 156. I got a whole bunch of Iron Mans. Uh, this is actually interesting. Issue number 262. Let me make sure you guys can actually see these. Uh, 263. Sorry. All of these are the Siege of Olympus. And prior to that, 273 and 270. I love these, the, 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 
the 25th anniversary covers. And 276 is this? Yes, 276, I remember that cover. These are all Avengers books when uh, the Avengers Mansion was actually attacked. Uh, just one of the best issues ever of the Avengers. 277, got to talk about the story. Here's, uh, they go against Poseidon, the, the rest of the Assault on Olympus. This is where they all come and they fight Zeus. I believe this is actually the issue, uh, 285. I think this is actually the issue where Zeus throws a lightning bolt, a magical lightning bolt, at Black Knight. And he knows that he can reflect uh, regular mundane physical energies with his ebony blade, but he actually reflects the magical attack of Zeus fully back at him. Like, Black Knight actually does more damage to Zeus than anybody else out there, and that includes Thor, who goes one-on-one -on -one against him. Uh, Hercules winds up joining in. Like, he's ba barely conscious, and he doesn't get, it, get far at all. But, yeah. Um... Absolutely amazing story. I can't wait to get into the conversation about that with a spotlight on story. I just put a spotlight on story today for a Court of Owls, Batman's Court of Owls. Guys, there's an intro and an outro. I'm just saying, check them both out. Um, issue number 269 of the Fantastic Four, first appearance of Terminus. Yeah. Uh, four of the six issues of Kitty Pride Wolverine. I'm very happy I got this back in my collection. Oh, something was hiding behind it. Oh, issue number 11 of Alpha Flight, this is cool, because issue 12, which I own, is where the Guardian actually dies. He actually gets killed. Um, did it again. Cute. Alpha Flight number 53, which has a uh, uh, box that's uh, Madison Jeffrey's uh, box with Wolverine appearing in it. And here's Transformers under Marvel, issue number 9, first appearance of Binary. I always loved that one. Uh, let's see, West Coast Avengers issue number one. This is, mind you, this is not Avengers West Coast, which is the original f uh, of the four-issue limited series. This is the actual main series that started after that four-issue limited series. That's number one. Avengers West Coast number uh, 56. You guys remember this one, right? This is the one where Scarlet Witch actually... Uh, we're not sure exactly what happened because it was off-camera, but... She goes after uh, Simon Williams, Wonder Man, and s uses her nails and does something to him in his pants. I'm just saying, wasn't a very good one. <laughs> like, for a whole bunch of young men who were reading at the comics at the time, nobody liked Scarlet Witch at that time. That was it. People were just done with her. Forget about killing or, or ending all the mutant powers. Nobody even cares about that compared to this. That, oof, that was it. So... <laughs> Sergeant Fury and the Howling Defenders, Defenders issue number 147. This is actually part of all new Defenders. Uh, anybody remember Shadowhawk from Image Comics? Yeah, so that's cool, man. I read this. I don't think I actually had the, the, the foil cover like this, which is surprising because I was a teenager back time and all those shiny things were like, oh my god, look at that, I gotta have that. Because, yeah, that was all of us, I think. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I decided to get the shiny cover now. Anyway, so I'm slowly but surely rebuilding my collection, which makes me happy. And getting a couple ones that I never had before. Jeez, um, so a whole bunch of X-Factors. And I can't remember which each one of these were, but part of the Fall of the Mutant storyline. Some of these are actually like first appearances of, of, of some people. Uh, issue number 66, whole bunch of x Factor. Uh, 68, if I remember correctly, this is actually the first appearance of uh, Richter. Uh, issue number 199 of Phoenix, that was, that's a classic cover right there. Um, uh, yes, I'm going to get to that in a minute, uh, Comics with Bueller, and I'm going to go back and see what everybody is, uh, is talking about. Um, uh, part 3 of 6, this is actually a key issue, I can't remember exactly who first appeared in here, but the part of the Bloodstone trilogy... Here's something that bugs me. First off, I did get, and this is a first edition of the original cover for the Death of Captain America. Captain America's Ed Brubaker's Captain America run, um, uh, Death of Captain America. Um, this is actually the variant cover, but I didn't notice second printing. That was not clearly advertised in the description, and my eyes, I just don't see like I used to when I was younger, so... Psh, that was not cool. I felt very disrespected that I, I think I paid $5 for that or whatever. It's like, that's not cool, man. Uh, anyway, issue number seven of the first Secret Wars. This is the first appearance of Spider, of that version of Spider-Woman. Um, 
here's a whole bunch. Bruce Banner back at last issue 315. This actually starts an amazing series right here where Banner was fully separated from the Hulk. Vision had something to do with that. Um, and it eventually led to issue number 324, The Return of the Grey Hulk. This is Al Milgram's cover. Uh, and he actually gives credit on the cover, I think somewhere over here, doesn't he? Yes, somewhere over here where he actually uh, references this is actually a Jack Kirby design that I just kind of traced over. So that's, oh my God. And Peter David on this dude, like the, the Gray Hulk, Mr. Fix-It, is my favorite Hulk run. Forget Planet Hulk, forget World War Hulk, forget Fall of the Hulks. That's my favorite version of the Hulk, my favorite Hulk stories. Uh, everybody remembers issue 36 of uh, the new, new Avengers, right? This is a classic cover. This is a seminal cover where we actually get to find the, um, uh, the, 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 the true identity of, uh, uh, for crying out loud, Jessica Drew, that original version of Spider-Woman. Here's issue number 432 of Thor, where Thor actually kills uh, Loki. Everybody thought that Thor killed Loki. He did, and he actually banished him. Uh, but Odin thought he killed Loki, and of course, Odin doesn't listen to anybody. It's so funny that people, you know, with... Um, what do you call it? Uh, talking about, what's her name? Um, oh, for crying out loud, what the heck is her name? Jane Foster. There are people who just, like, completely, completely against Jane Foster. They made Odin look like a hardhead. You cannot argue that you've ever read a single Thor comic book in your life. Like, this is just one of those particular, you know, conversation points right there. That Odin was always a hard head. He was always stubborn. He was always about as dumb as a bag of Mjolnir's, a bag of hammers. Like, always like that. Don't, don't, don't say, like, oh, Jason Aaron did that. No, Jason Aaron was continuing a long tradition. Issue 99 and 100 of The New Mutants, which would eventually lead into The X Factor. Uh, okay, here's one I never owned before but I can't tell you how happy I am to own this now. Issue 196 of the Avengers, the first full appearance of the Taskmaster. I've never owned this before, and I got it. I nailed this one. I think I got this for like $15. This is somebody else's bid. He didn't double pack any of these. This, I can't tell you how happy I am to actually own this comic book for once. I am so excited. Forget about it. Also... Not the first appearance of Barbara Morse, but the first appearance of Barbara Morse as Mockingbird. This is Marvel Team Up with Spider-Man issue number 95. Her first appearance in her outfit and calling herself Mockingbird. That is exciting for me. Issue number 7 of the Transformers, uh, the original Marvel run. I'm not interested in too much of the other Transformers stuff, although I did like Mags Visagio's um, Transformers vs. Visionaries. That was actually pretty interesting. Uh, I really liked the story. Uh, regardless, this is the first issue, the first, if, my, if I remember correctly, this is absolutely, well, I, I know that this is the first issue where we saw that Optimus Prime's head was separated from his body. That was traumatic as a, as a, 11 year old reading that uh that was like what excuse me this was nothing like the tv series that was so so rated g this stuff is like pg-13 some crazy stuff happened here and i think it's the next issue where we get the first appearance of the leadership matrix yes the leadership matrix appeared in the marvel comics years, like two years before Transformers the movie came out, uh, the actual movie. There was a comic book, three-issue miniseries of Transformers the movie. But when that came out, that they are like, oh, the Leadership Matrix. And everybody's like, what's the Leadership of Matrix? And I was like, I read the comic books. I could tell you all about it. <laughs> so, yeah, that the comic books give you something. Here's something. Issue number one, and I know the controversy behind this. I don't care. The uh, issue number one of X-Men Gold. This is the original print. I actually got it for a cover price. Uh, Artie and CF. Uh, when he put his, his, uh, his text in there. Which, the, it's funny. The text itself is not necessarily anti-Christian or anti-Jewish. It's just simply pro-Muslim. And the other uh, quote that was in there was actually something very specific to uh, Indonesia. Uh, yeah, he's from Indonesia. Very specific to Indonesia. So there was one uh, Quranic quote and one non-Quranic quote. Uh, both of them were just about. Make no mistake, though. He absolutely is a hard-lined, like, far, far-right Muslim who's just a little bit loco en la cabeza, and he needs to take a chill pill. Uh, the, the, what he wrote in here was not actually uh, inflammatory, 
but I could see people, obviously, I could see people taking uh, inflammatory, whatever, it's, it's whatever it is. But literally, like, it's something, it's, it's wow classic, and I totally got it. Uh, it's not so much Muslim propaganda. The one thing that it says in there is, um, you shall not take the Christians and the Jews as protectors over you. Uh, in fact, hold on, hold on. Um, I, I speak Arabic on a conversational level, like to taxi drivers and bagalas. Uh, <laughs> see? Bagalas, the, uh, the corner store people and uh, grocery store people. Okay, the word, Aulia. The word is Aulia. Um... When they say, do not take the Christians and the Jews as awliya, I spent five years in Saudi Arabia for crying out loud. Um, uh, do not take them as awliya. This means, th the word can, there's a lot of homonyms for the word. You can use it for many ways, but the main reason for using it is as protectors. It could be uh, surrogates or leaders, and he uses it as the term leaders. Do not make a Christian or a Jew your leader. That's what he means by it, but the actual word is meant, meant to be protector, because back in the day um, when the, the pagans were trying to kill the Muslims when they first happened, and this was in the city of Mecca, um, they would, the, the, the Muslims who had money would go to some of these tribal leaders who, you know, they were all pagans and idol worshippers, and they would say, listen, I'm going to pay you this much money. Please make me an honorary part of your house so that I can have the protection so that nobody can throw rocks at me or actually try to murder me, you know what I'm saying, or steal my stuff. Please say that I'm under your protection. You say it, and then everybody will know it. So, uh, so Muhammad had actually come and said, do not take them as protectors. Only God is your protector. Uh, anybody who finds any kind of insult in that, that is 100% on you. That is not. That doesn't have to do with the religion. That has to do with anything else, literally. That's just one of those things where it's like, dude, you're going to believe what you want to believe. Let's start talking about the Bible if you want. I've read the Bible way more times than I've read the Quran. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's it doesn't have, there's, there's no insult there. It's the idea of look out for yourself, take God as your only protector. That sounds like the most Christian thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, but, but the way that he used it, the way that Artie and CF used it, he, uh, not the way he used it, but the intent he had in his mind because of the people who he hangs out with, he's known to hang out with, he's taken pictures with these people and posted on his Twitter, they are extremely hard-lined hard, uh, hard uh, people, they're extreme far-right uh, who are just like, oh yeah, man, we gotta, like, if it means killing non-Muslims, then we gotta kill non-Muslims. Like, okay, dude, now you're, now you're, like, outside of my purview of sanctity. You, there's something wrong with your head. So, yes, it was whatever. I know what his intent was. The other thing was just a march, the date of a march that they did to get rid of the, the, the tyrannical, mind you, the tyrannical leader who ascribed to Christianity of Indonesia. It is what it is. Anyway, uh, that's what all that situation actually was. Uh, I've actually talked to a bunch of people about that, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, how about some art gem? Issue number 16. Uh, excuse me, art germ. I always call it art gem because these are like gems for me. These are so amazing. But art germ, uh, I forget his actual name, Lee something. Anyway, uh, his art is just amazing. So Supergirl number 16, the variant cover, absolutely gorgeous. You might have seen the other ones. Now I'm curious about the views of Christianity. Uh, depends on what you want. <laughs> anyway, um, what do you call it? So now I've got something really cool to show you guys. Are you ready? Icon issue number one. Oh, that's right. First appearance of everybody in here. This is their first appearance. This is the, the DC milestone. That's right. I am extremely happy to get this comic book. This, I've never owned this before. I never actually owned this before. So, boom. There should be some milestone explained in a minute stuff, including some static shock pretty soon. Who knows? Uh, here we go. You remember Secret Wars? I just showed you one of the covers for Secret Wars. That was actually a big deal because that was a toy company saying, hey, man, could you? we're going to make a bunch of toys. We want a contract for you making the toys. But if we're going to make the toys, can you make a comic book where you actually show those toys and everything, blah, 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 and actually call them the Secret Wars, and we'll call them the Secret Wars? Marvel's like, yeah, sure. So DC decided to jump on that bandwagon. They made... Superpowers, and this is issue number one of Superpowers. I can't remember if it actually happens in this comic book. I'll have to open it up and check, but I don't want to do... I tried to do that already earlier. Um, this comic book, uh, or at least this first series, shows... Uh, everybody always says, oh yeah, Darkseid, his, his, um, his uh, Omega Beams can't be dodged. Well, guess what? Robin dodged his uh, Omega Beams. 
in this series. So that's <laughs> that's great for me. Here's issue 335 of Captain America, which is the first appearance of the Watchdogs. If you guys have been watching the Agents of Shield in the like two seasons ago, you know all about the Watchdogs. Anyway, really good stuff there. And yeah, this is actually uh, um, what do you call it? the the next uh, Captain America? Yes, some other people actually replaced Captain America long before Bucky or Sam Wilson. Now imagine that. Anyway, yes. Uh, so this is John Walker. Uh, and yes, John Walker is supposed to be named after Johnny Walker. Uh, his, he actually changed his, his name legally in the comic books from Jack Daniels. So yeah, all of it was just about whiskeys, <laughs> which is like the most hysterical thing you could possibly imagine. Um, issue number one of X-Men number 299 with the whole like glowy color and all, or cover and all that stuff. Uh, issue number 277 of uh, uh, Incredible Hulk. So we got some Wendigo action. This, is, this should be the first appearance of the Wendigo. If I'm remembering correctly, I might be wrong on that. Issue 281, issue of 280, 281 was the first appearance of, of uh, Wolverine. This, I believe, is the first appearance of the Wendigo. So, nice. Uh, Spawn, issue number 5. Uh, issue number f issue number one is important. Issue number four is important. That's the first appearance of the Violator. I don't have that one. I may get it one of these days. Um, and issue number nine is important because that's the first appearance of Angela. This is important to me because it's like one of the most beautiful covers ever. Like that's just a gorgeous cover. Um, hey, what's going on, uh, uh, Magic Man? I just happened to see that. Peace, brother. Uh, issue number fifty. Of Silver Surfer, the actual glowy cover, the foil cover, and all that good stuff. Ah, absolutely great. I don't remember if this is... No, this can't be the first... Um, the first... Um, is this the first... Uh, this is Ron Lim, obviously. I can't remember if this is the first um, Thanos issue. No, Jim Starlin. I can't remember if this is the first Jim Starlin issue or not. I think that was issue 42, if I'm remembering correctly. But whatever it is, um, it's an important issue. Uh, this is this is the stuff that leads up to the, uh, um, the 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 Thanos quest and all that other stuff. I'm going to save this one for last. So I, I grabbed issue number one of uh, New 52's Aquaman. Uh, that was also a good story. Okay, I got a what if. This is probably the most important what if comic book in the world, but definitely to Nerdarchy. What if Wolverine battled Conan? Uh, Dave from Nerdarchy and I talk about every time that we have a conversation, somehow this comic book comes up. So I had to grab it, of course. I got the uh, original two covers for Baby Teeth, um, which is cool. This is the original one right here. This is the variant cover. Uh, I really like that series from Aftershock. Okay, issue number two and three of the New 52's Batman Dark Knight. So this is no real first appearances in here, no like important uh, first appearances. I think the first issue was the first appearance of White Rabbit, but whatever, it is what it is. Anyways, maybe this was the first appearance of White Rabbit. I don't think it was. Anyway, it's not important. Uh, <laughs> Image Comics, I don't know if you guys remember Brigade or not, but I got Brigade, issue number one. Here's the first appearance, Amazing Adventures, featuring The Beast, only 20 cents, issue number 15, first appearance of the Griffin, that's, that's a cool one for me, you know, he just fought Spider-Man recently, he's not in a whole lot of comics, but it's a first appearance, okay, um, issue number 148 of the Uncanny X-Men, I'm trying to remember what all these ones were, I know there's a lot of first appearances in here, I can't remember if this is the first appearance of Dazzler or not. I think it is, but it might not be. Uh, somebody confirm that for me. Issue number 148 of the Uncanny X-Men. Um, issue 159 is technically the first non-canical version of, uh, or at least the first non-canical version of Bloodstorm, which is uh, uh, the vampiric version of uh, Storm, if she would have stayed a vampire. So technically, that's an important issue. Uh, issue 160 of the X-Men. I can't remember. This This obviously has Belasco in it. I think that this is the, one of the issues that starts off with uh, Ileana Rasputin actually becoming magic and getting her mutant powers. Um, let's see. Marvel team-up featuring Spider-Man and Iron Man. Okay, issue number 48. This is the first appearance of uh, Gene DeWolf. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if anybody's really familiar 
with Jean DeWolf. But anyway, that's her first appearance. Issue number 17 of Captain Marvel. This is the first appearance of the Nega Bands. That was a really cool one for me. So that that's cool. I didn't get I didn't get his first appearance. I got his death. Oh, the original cover and everything for um, Dazzler issue number one. That's a cool one. And whatever Infinity Watch Warlock Infinity Watch issue number one, which I'd already covered on there. Dazzler was one thirty. Okay, thank you, thank you for that, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Joel. If I pronounce that wrong, please forgive me. Um, earlier, right after Kitty Pride's first appearance. Yeah, I remember it was after Kitty Pride's appearance, but. Like, I saw Kitty in there, so I'm like, maybe? Anyway, I uh, appreciate that, guys. Genuinely, thank you. Okay, and last one. This is a growl for me. This is a huge growl for me. This is, I had this poster, and by my, this is Captain America Annual, issue number eight. This is the one where Captain America told Wolverine, you will never be an Avenger as long as I live. Until, of course, Joe Quesada came along and said, Psh, forget that. Wolverine's really important and popular. Put him in the Avengers. Anyway, um, I had this poster. And this was an amazing poster. And the way I got this poster was because I went over this dude's house. And uh, I know his name. Darn it. I, I, want, I was fiending on his sister in the worst way because she's, like, gorgeous. But um, uh, anyway, <laughs> can't remember the guy's name. I played Dungeons and Dragons with him and Marvel Super Heroes game with him anyway. And I... I um, we were having a conversation. He's like, you know, you know about Marvel. Hey, let's talk. And we started going back and forth. And we came into this, like, obviously I knew more than him. But there's one thing, and I can't remember what the question was. Um, oh, what is Captain America's shield made out of? <laughs> and since he played the Marvel game, he made the mistake of saying, oh, it's an adamantium vibranium compound alloy. And I'm like, no, it is not an adamantium vibranium compound alloy. That's impossible because uh, adamantium is actually made from vibranium. It's actually a derivative of vibranium and iron and another, um, uh, what do you call it? another unknown catalyst that causes them to bond, and that makes uh, adamantium. And he's like, no, 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 no. And he refused to believe it. So he's like, I'll bet you my poster. I was like, the cool one over your bed, that one? The Captain America versus Wolverine? He's like, yeah, because I've never seen that sold. I was like, all right, done. So we went and looked it up in the official Marvel handbook, and psh, I got the poster, basically. And... Um, we were still friends for a long time afterwards, uh, but still, like, you, you don't question. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The professor, man. Even when I was only, what was I, 16? I guess I was like 15 or 16. Yeah, I was six, I was 15 years old. You don't question the professor, man. Anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> we'll never be an Avenger. Made Deadpool a full-fledged Avenger. <laughs> exactly, Cryptid. Exactly. What's up, dude? Uh, this Monday, we'll get DC solicitations. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Flirting with girls to get comics. Uh, Brendan, you know it, man. You always got to have your Mac game on. So um, let's let's go up and check out a bunch of these before I get into the, the potentially controversial subject. And I'm not here to sit here and, and limit free speech. You guys can say whatever you want to say. Um, just understand, I would rather be an adult conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, whether you studied philosophy or not, just understanding the idea that you can ask questions without there being an ulterior motive or without there being some rude thing to say, you know, whatever. It's like you can ask questions or say things or make a statement without it actually being an attack or even just talk about something without it being, you know, uh, uh, what is it called? A censored subject. You shouldn't talk about stuff like You shouldn't say those kinds of words. You shouldn't, you know, think about this. Like, I don't know. Sorry, I'm a huge proponent of 1984, the uh, George Orwell book that, no, you don't limit free speech. You don't sit there and say, oh, this is a politically incorrect statement. I'm not interested in somebody trying to, like, bash, or even, or I definitely don't want somebody to sit there and bash me and try and, like, ostracize me or anything. And, like, this guy dared to say or suggest something. No. Like, we're just having a discussion. So, anyway, let's just get to this stuff really quick. Uh, boom, boom. Uh, I notice you talk to people on Twitter more. I started today to really talk more on Twitter and, yeah, try and bring up my A game on Twitter a little bit more because, yeah. Um, I know that's how guys like DNC, uh, uh, Zach from Diversity in Comics, got famous is because he had a huge Twitter following and then, like, just kind of jumped into doing the comic books. And it's like, um, I, you know, uh, without... Without being extremely rude, I want to do something similar. I just want to, like, engage people more on Twitter. Like, I was in the comic book store today. Um, oh, I got pictures. 
<laughs> I'm going to actually throw them up later when I actually get a chance, but for now, I actually got a, a, a quick picture of me in the comic book store. Okay, can I get a bigger picture? Me in the comic book store today. <sighs> Let me actually uh, see what I'm... Okay, yeah. Oh, you can see it better that way. There we go. With the Infinity Gauntlet that he's got there. Yeah, I can see why that thing's so expensive. It lights up, and you can actually move the fingers. Like, all of the fingers individually. So, you can't actually snap very well, but you can try. <laughs> anyway, and uh, what I got? It was Deadpool Day. So, it was Taco Day. So, you give a dollar donation, and you get a free taco. So, I got two, and I ate them. My son took some nachos, and uh, yes, we, we had a good day today in the comic book store. Oh, and we got a free comic book also, and I don't remember where I put those. Crap, because I got a whole bunch of extra comic books today. Oh, there's actually, yeah, two more that I kind of want to show you guys too. Anyway, so oh, we got a sketch, Gotham Central Comics and Collectibles. One of the guys there, a guy named Mike, uh, he did a sketch for my son for Deadpool. I got to hang that up in here someplace. And uh, yeah, we got this free... Deadpool comic. I don't know where it comes from. It's issue number one. This looks like it's all new uh, Marvel from like way back in the day that joined the revolution and all that stuff. Like this is back in the day. But it's uh, Poston and Duggan. So like this is obviously an older issue. It's got to be. Anyway, yeah, I got a whole bunch of good stuff in here. A um, whole bunch of older stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, this is one of the ones I got off the wall. And I know I got another one. Where the frick is it? Oh, got my variant cover. I'll show that one off. There we go. Okay, so I got the first appearance of Cobra from DC. Nobody knew what that was. Nobody in the comic book store knew what that was. It was only 10 bucks, And I was like, what? Before this guy goes into a TV show or the movies, I'm going to, to grab this. Because you know that the second that he suddenly goes into the movies or, or, or shows up on Arrow, they're going to be like, oh, okay, it goes up to like $50. It's like, it's freaking Cobra, man. Come on. Anyway... Look at the, the latest issue of Flash, but I got the variant cover. Like, this is just gorgeous. And yes, that is absolutely Solomon, uh, Hunter Solomon. Uh, oh, man, that is a gorgeous variant cover. Anyway, and then uh, look at what I got. Issue number one of the, uh, the new Hawkman. And yes, this is uh, uh, Qatar Hall, not, uh, not Carter Hall. It's Qatar Hall. But, um, and he's my least favorite of the two main versions of Hawkman. Anyway, um, this is the one that goes right after the Shadow War 4 issued limited series, then this series started. So I'm really happy that I got that. Probably going to have to post that on Hawk World. Be like, look guys! Anyway, um, yeah, so a bunch of good stuff. Okay, uh, let's just get to these comments really quick before we start having this conversation. Um, boom, 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 boom. How many comics do you have? I have, uh, oh, and uh, what's your name? Tr oh, Troublemaker Bricks. What's going on, dude? Uh, welcome to the channel. I have three short boxes of totally awesome comic books. I think I need to get a fourth uh, short box right now. I used to have seven, close to seven full, because I had short boxes and long boxes, but easily almost seven full long boxes of comics. Uh, but in 2011, I actually had, to, I actually wound up losing them all because I made a move over to Saudi Arabia and, um, uh, what do you call it? I had them in a storage and I thought I'm just gonna, I paid three months in advance and I figured I'll just start making payments from overseas once I get a, a bank card or a credit card or something like that over there. Uh, but it turns out you have to wait three months to get a credit card when you're over there. So literally by the time that I was able to start making payments again, they're like, dude, we already auctioned off your, your box. Wow. So they auctioned off my storage unit. Uh, I hope it at least showed up on a freaking Storage Wars episode or something like that, because that would be cool, but it was in Jersey, so probably not. But anyway, somebody got a hold of all of my totally amazing freaking comic books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even want to know some of the cool things that were in there. Anyway, um, Transformers is a good series. You're darn right, Troublemaker Bricks. Uh, Tom, uh, Spike, Stan Lee likes Tom as Spider-Man. I think he liked everybody as Spider-Man. So how about the new West Coast Avengers? New West Coast Avengers should be interesting. I don't know about having America on there. Like I said, I've never read America except for in the Ultimates 2 series, which they didn't go into any explanation about her whatsoever. She just seemed like somebody who could do anything. And it's like, okay, I don't know what your power is. Your power is just to beat up whoever you get into an argument with, which is interesting. 
Um, but I really learned everything I needed to learn about her, in my opinion, by when her 12th issue came out. Uh, I saw in Comixology, the day that her 12th issue came out, her her second volume also came out, which included the 12th issue, issue number 7 through 12. And while the 12th issue came out for a newsstand price, $2.99, it would be $3.99, but uh, in Comixology it would be $2.99, they uh, they also sold for the, the the second volume for only ninety nine cents. So like, let me get this straight. I can get issue number seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for only ninety nine cents, or pay three times that amount for one sixth of the book. Yeah, I think I'm just going to save all of my money and not even touch the series. That told me everything I think I needed to know about. Excuse me, America. Akuma Ranger, welcome to the channel, dude. Um, uh, speaking of West Coast, you ha have you heard about the announcement of the new West Coast uh, book by Tal Kelly Thompson? Yes, yeah, so I was uh, talking about. Gotcha. Uh, Isaiah Quinn, did you hear about Marvel's announce a fall Spider-Man event called spider Geddon? Are you excited about it? Uh, what do you want to happen in it? So that's the thing. That's one of the things about me, Isaiah. I don't go around telling people, like, okay, this is what I want to see. No, 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 no. What I want to see is a good story. I am not a, a, a writer yet of comic books. I'm hoping one day I will be. Hopefully one day that, that, that actually happens. But for now, um, I want good writers to write good stories. That's really it. Um, I may critique, or of course I critique, I, I review the comic books, but I just want to see a good story. I want them to tell me a good story. I'm not so pretentious as to think, okay, now here's what you need to do to make me happy. Nah, just <laughs> silly little things for me. Like, don't treat Wolverine, uh, excuse me, don't treat Juggernaut and Sabretooth like a bunch of chump stains. You know what I'm saying? Don't just smack them around and they're just there for cannon, for cannon fodder. No. Make sure they're a credible threat and maybe sometimes they win, and the hero barely gets away with his life. That's how you make a credible villain. And especially when you're talking about somebody savage like Sabretooth, or somebody who should be unbeatable like the Juggernaut. You know what I'm saying? You don't do a freaking infinite mass light punch with ice powers, and like, how did you even lift your fist? You know what I'm saying? Um, I guess because he's controlling the ice on it, but like that's just silly. That's so silly to me. Um... Or, or freeze the deck of a ship to have him slide off. The dude's supposed to be invincible right now, man. Come on. So, um, yeah, just don't make the characters silly. Don't make the bad guys silly. Um, uh, I didn't get notified. Sorry? I, I, I don't get notified about a lot of your guys' comments, which bugs me. Uh, Mark Guerrero, Comic Book University, with all the prequel shows we've gotten and the ones we are getting, what other DC hero do you think is interesting enough to have a prequel series? Prequel series? You mean on TV? Or I, I'm sorry, I need to understand more about what you're saying. But whether it's in the comic books or in the TV series, um, where's Rocket Red and Red Tornado? That's my question. Where are those guys? Uh, so there, that's my that's my answer. I know um, Red Tornado was in like two or three episodes of the first season of Supergirl. That's cool. That's cool. Can we go from there? Can he now get sentience and go out and have his own series? Because I would, I would watch that. Uh, Star is so comedic and no justice. He really is. I love it. I love it. Cryptid. Uh, I think the drawing of having Nightcrawlers, a German, swinging a bat, looking like it hit uh, Kitty, Jewish, was one of the other things to make. Oh, yeah, the Artie and CF. You know, I don't even remember that. I, you know what? I don't know if he would actually do something like that. If he, if he, plus, yeah, I don't know. If he actually did that, that's kind of messed up. Um, Jesse Johnson, what's going on, dude? Uh, I love your insight of things. I learn something every time I'm here. Awesome. That's exactly why I do this. Also to interact with you guys. Uh, Mark Rowe, the Black Lightning should start off using Static and <laughs> Blood Syndicate and then introduce other milestone heroes in later series. That would be cool. That would be cool. Season 2. Let's do that. I didn't watch Season 1 yet. Um, let's see. Uh, boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Guy from Red Bank, what's up? Proud to the people. Yeah, I got that what if issue, the Conan vs. Wolverine. It was a good one. Um, <laughs> Deadpool dies in Infinity War. Hmm. Um, Sean, I remember Scotty Young did an Avengers variant with uh, where Man Thing wanted to join. That's that sounds cool. I stopped going on Twitter. Guy from Red Bank says I can't stand Twitter. Uh, it's hard to blame you for that. Never got into Twitter myself, Cryptid says. Uh, too much drama. Yeah, yeah, the drama is really annoying. It's funny, like, every, 
Uh, what is this guy? Uh, speaking about Zach, I can't wait for Jawbreakers. Cole, uh, Anibus RA. Hello, you retracted your message. Can't really respond too much. Oh, what's here? Uh, I come here to learn about comics. New to comics here. Well, let's see if we can learn about comic books together. And that's that's not being condescending at all, Anibus. Or uh, Anibus Ra, very specific. That's a totally awesome name. I love the Egyptian uh, tinge to your, 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 your name. But, um, what do you call it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Jawbreakers doesn't look good art-wise to me, but I don't know what's actually going to be in it. So, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I, I have no interest in actually re reviewing it, though, because let's be honest, if I review it and I don't like it, what's going to happen? I'm going to say, oh, I didn't like it, because, and I'm going to be very critical and be like, okay, because this and this and this and this and this, or even if it's just one thing. Any one thing that I say, and that's what happened with... Um, the Critical Role comic book. When Critical Role comic book came out, I judged it as a comic book. You know, because it's a comic book. And people are like, you don't know anything about the series. Maybe you should have learned something about the series first and blah, blah, blah. Um, why? It's a bunch of actors, literally actors, who sit around playing a version of Dungeons and Dragons. Why do I need to learn about it? Well, because you, you're talking about it and you don't know about it. I don't have to. This is a comic book and it's supposed to be a prequel. This is supposed to be a prequel to their game. So if they can't convince me as a comic book reader to check out their game, well, guess what? This was made just for you. And I don't have to learn about the game. This is a prequel. This should tell me all about anything that I need to know about this. Well, you know, you obviously don't know the names or anything like that. Okay, you're right, I don't. And I don't care to converse with you anymore. Goodbye. I hope this was good therapy for you. And that's exactly what this would be with Jawbreakers, except even worse, I would imagine. Because people would see that I'm reviewing it, and they would expect, he better say exactly what I want him to say, and the right amount of enthusiasm better be there, or we're going to blast him, because let's be realistic. You know what I'm saying? And this has nothing to do with, with Zach himself. This has everything to do with a lot of his really more hard-line, hard-thinking followers, who when Zach says, dude, don't go and criticize this person for such and such and such. And they turn around and say, No, I will criticize him because I will defend you, my liege. Dude, you actually need a Valium and some therapy to get the prescription for the Valium and actually take a breather because, like, this this hostility, it's, it's not necessary. Anyway, so no, I don't think that I could review the comic book and have an actual intelligent conversation with the majority of people who would show up for it. I'm not interested in the hits for the sake of the hits. That's not what I'm here for. I'm, I'm interested in having good conversations about actual comic books. Um, America's a great character, Brevin Campbell 12 says. Uh, read Ultimates 1. I could, I might, but hey, check this out. How about you actually review it yourself, or if you already did, put the review up on my Facebook page. Guys, Comic Book University on Facebook, go and check it out. I actually have a video where I talk about you can do your own reviews, video or typed, on my Facebook channel. Uh, I actually deleted somebody today. I probably shouldn't have, but whatever. It was on the on one of my videos here, he just jumped onto my video and said, oh, hey, guys, check out my video on my review on such and such and such. Please be nice. I'm new at this, blah, 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 blah. He has nine subs. I'm just like, you know what, dude? And I just deleted him. And I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have talked to him instead. Uh, that's what I usually do. I'll, like, engage him instead. But, like, it gets annoying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, got, I just crested 4,500 subs. You know what I'm saying? And do you, back when I had two subs, me, because that's automatic, you automatically are your first subscriber, and then my wife was my first, and then Lewis from the Geek Fortress was like my third subscriber, you know what I'm saying, when I had only a couple uh, subs, do you know how much I, I thought about just going on to places like, like Comic Storian, and Rob Explains, and, and like TV Little House, and all of those, and be like, hey guys, check out my, my videos, because I do such and such and such, but I thought to myself, you know, Rob and Benny and, uh, and Sal, all those guys, they busted their butts to make these videos and to get hits and to get views and to get popular and to monetize and do all those incredible things. What kind of a freaking turd would I have to be to just try and bite off of, not even milk off of them, bite off of what Ever, all the hard work that they did and try and steal a couple stuff. And plus, your average person would probably just look at it as, dude, you're a jerk. Go away. Nobody wants to look at your stupid stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'd probably get less people even interested in looking at my stuff. So, like, what exactly would be the point of that? So I just said, you know what? Let me build off of my own 
persona, uh, uh, what do you call it, just organically, you know what I'm saying, and that's what I did, and like everything that I have is, I didn't try and use any tricks, I never, ever, ever used the term SJW in a single one of my my uh, links, in a single one of my, my broadcast bars, my, my description bars, I never used it in the description, I never used it in a tag, I've never used those three letters, SJW, in a row like that for the sake of, you know what I'm saying, trying to get hits or anything. I never I never entered those words for anything because I know that would be an easy way to do that stuff. And it's like, but it's cheap. It's cheap and it's dirty and it's it's just sad. You know, so like I, I, I see it as nothing less than sickening. And I've seen people who had far less subs than me suddenly skyrocket up in hits and all that stuff. But that's not the kind of toxic crowd that I'm really looking for. I'm looking for actual critical thinkers. You could be critical with me. You could disagree with me. You could do whatever you want. But that kind of nonsense is simply not what I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? I'm not looking to to disqualify myself for like the situation that DNC is in right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not interested. You know, I was just talking <laughs> with somebody who's actually a, a divorce lawyer, but whatever. Um, and he's in Canada, but I was just talking with this guy recently, and I was like, I don't think this thing, like, as much as this guy is talking trash, I don't think this is even going to go to court, so he's talking about illegality, illegality, and, and of course, when you have somebody who's, ext- who is, regardless, still extremely toxic, and attacks people, personal attacks, and all sorts of things like that, who suddenly turns around and, I'm being victimized, it's like, to me, it's like, this is the funniest thing. I have never watched a Woody Woodpecker episode as funny as watching somebody who is who attacks people all the time and then suddenly turns around, I'm a victim! I'm a victim! It's like, dude, I'm, I'm freaking dying right now in hilarity. Like, that... I had all sorts of respect for you as, as a sol- as a fellow soldier and everything, and then to turn around and start, I'm a victim! Dude, I'm, I'm dying. Thank you for that, that little bit of mirth. I enjoyed it greatly. Um... She's a good character. Gabby Rivera ruined her. I thought Gabby Rivera was actually one of the people who were responsible for her creation, so shows you how little I know. Um, oh, Red Black Kane is agreeing. What's up, Red Black Kane? Um, I love Zach's voice on Gabby Rivera's America. I don't think I've heard her. I've heard him... Wolverine's Generations. I heard him doing that voice. And, like, the voice in his head is cute. But it's obviously extremely condescending. I heard the voice very differently when I read it. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? And he looked he, like the way he was reading it. It's like, dude, you're 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 like you're you're really trying too hard to insult people. Um, whatever. It's it's cute. I know he says it's all in humor. I know that half of it is. The other half is disguised as humor. You got to remember, every time that somebody cracks a joke, there is some truth behind that joke, and it gives you an idea into what kind of person, or, or at least the thought process someone has when they tell jokes. Humor is like, that's why I don't think that humor should ever be um, uh, limited. You know, say so there should be no cap on humor. You know, say so when somebody's doing something in jest or trying to be funny or whatever, listen to what they say. You can learn a lot from it in satire. You can learn a lot about the person also. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they sh- nobody should ever censor humor. Uh, Bill is the man. Thanks, Clint Mack. Uh, word- <laughs> oh my god. I thought that we stopped using word is bond a long time ago. <laughs> um, what do you call it? So, uh, what are we going to talk about heroes with disabilities? Shut up, Sean. I'm getting to it. <laughs> um, wondering the same thing. Relax, Brevin Campbell. Okay, cool. Pass me one. Hey, I'm thirsty. Ooh, you know what? Oh, man! Oh, man. You know what? Hey, babe? Babe? Hey, babe? Thank you. You're going to love this. Honey, can I have my soda from the fridge, please? Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> so oh no, I'm getting a I'm getting a soda. Um, I found this. Look, I don't know if this is available all over Canada because remember, I'm I'm American, all right, and I've been in Canada for almost two years now. Um, what do you call it? But but 
uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I, uh, I'm getting used to things, and I actually found a place that has Grape Fanta. Dude, I see the orange stuff all over the place. Or actually, not even all over the place. I see, like, you know, other orange stores. But thank you. Can you close that? Thank you. I got a thumbs up. That's awesome. Anyway, I found Grape Fanta. This and Birch Beer are my childhood. Dude, you have no idea. So I found Grape Fanta. So I'm just like, I'm going to, like, tease you guys and share it. I don't even know if anybody likes Grape Fanta. But, like, this is my, my childhood, dude. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That, it smells like a Pez. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. Oh! <laughs> like, I just had one a couple days ago, and I saved the other one to show you guys, because I don't know if you guys have access to this in the rest of Canada. I don't know if this is, like, a strange phenomenon or something like that. It's hard to find provolone cheese as an Italian. As a Sicilian, it's hard for me to find provolone cheese here. And you guys don't have Chick-fil-A, which is absurd to me! Chick-fil-A is, is life, man, and y'all don't have Chick-fil-A! Dipping the, the, the breaded chicken in the, in the peanut sauce? Dude! Oh, the worst thing about Chick-fil-A is that they're closed on Sundays. But they don't even have it here. Like, it's the worst thing imaginable. Anyway, where's the donuts? I actually have some Timmy Hortons. Um, I say Timmy Hortons instead of Timmy's or Tim Hortons. I have Tim Hortons, the chocolate dipped, like where it's a regular donut, but like the tip is dipped. But that's in there. And I'm going to have that with some milk later on. Actually, this is going to be a lot of sugar. I might have that tomorrow because I'm, 43, I'm almost 43. Zach would make fun of me for what? Um... And I don't care. Z I would make fun of Zach, too. And we would probably both laugh about it because... Ooh, wow, that's my kneecap. Uh, because we're both soldiers, and we're used to making fun of each other. So, <laughs> Zach and I would probably freaking laugh hysterically with each other. I was just in the comic book store the other day. His real name... I know, Richard. <laughs> but uh, I, I can understand why he doesn't want to use the name Dick. Uh, I'm just saying. Anyway, um, I was in the store the other day, and somebody was like... Um, we were talking about D&C. And he didn't even know I had my own comic book channel. And I was just talking, and it came up. I was like, he's a soldier. I'm, I'm a former, you know, he, we're both former soldiers. And he's like, oh, did you, like, serve in Afghanistan? And I was like, uh, anyway. And he's just like, I don't understand why we want to talk to me about Afghanistan. I was like, and that's half the problem. Like, no disrespect, but soldiers are more than happy to talk to each other about, like, war efforts and things like that. But we don't even talk to our own kids about it, so... You, you're not, and he just gave me a look like, huh? I was like, and that look is exactly why I don't want to have a conversation with you about it. You're not going to understand. Anyway, do you want to keep on talking? And he's like, I guess. I was like, all right, cool, man. It's been good talking to you. Later. And I just walked away, literally, like that. And I, I didn't leave the comic book store. I just walked around and started doing other things. Some people just don't get it. I'm sorry. It's not your conversation. And that's, that's that. You know, some people are happy to talk about some little things in the military. That's cool, but... Yeah, some of us don't want to talk about anything. Uh, what's up, Truman? Okay, so let's get right into this. Um, Heroes with Disabilities. Uh, there was uh, this thing, I don't know the guy's name, but it's been going around on a whole bunch of nerdy channels. There's this dude who is apparently 100% deaf, I don't know, but he's talking about, oh, Hawkeye is deaf in the comic books, and I think that he should be played by a deaf guy, namely me. And he goes and takes his pictures where he's like, Okay, look, I am comfortable enough with my heterosexuality that I'm able to say, yeah, he's a good-looking guy, fine, whatever, I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Um, his mustache and beard look a little pointy, you know what I'm saying? So maybe he, it looks like more he'd be willing to play a villain, in my opinion. Maybe El Aguila, uh, there, there's a, a good guy, but it looks like he'd be good with an EP, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to a bow and arrow. But, you know, whatever, man. Um, he actually looks more like Oliver North. Uh, Oliver North. Oh my God, that was a huge mistake. Uh, war criminal who became the head of the uh, NRA. That says a lot about that company. But, um, no, very specifically, he looks like Oliver Queen. There we go. <laughs> Oliver Queen, uh, the Green Arrow. But regardless, here's this cat who's just like, you know, hey, I think I want to, you know, I would like to play this. Here's the thing. Um, here's the thing. When you have uh, a guy who is basically saying, fire Jeremy Renner so that I could play his role, the role that he was hired for. I don't think that's going to go over with anybody. 
See, that's the thing. That's the deep thinking. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm like, you know, the deepest thinker of the world. No, but that, like, when you think about a thought to its logical conclusion, what exactly is this guy saying? Fire Jeremy Reynolds and hire me. Renner. Fire Jeremy Renner and hire me to play this role. Look, it sounds good on the outset, but, like, when you really think about it, what are you really saying here? How do I know you can act? What other things have you acted in? Maybe you haven't got a chance. Like, you're talking about jumping into an Avengers movie, which is, like, the biggest spotlight. Look, there are a whole lot of people who, like, I try to get some people who I've seen. They've got a, a fairly consistent style. Some people don't. But, uh, what do you call it? Um, one of the friends of mine, I try to get them on the uh, onto Comic Book University to make some videos. And, you know, to do some reviews. It lightens my burden a little bit, for Mondays at least, if they get the videos in uh, soon enough, uh, so that I could actually take a day off, you know, saying, and spend some time with my family on, like, you know, a Monday if they give me my stuff, you know, or give me the stuff in advance, and I don't have to, you know, rush, rush, rush to make all these other videos. Um, it takes the burden off me. So there's actually, there's definitely something in it for me. But there's a lot in it for them also in that I have a much bigger audience than some of these guys. So, hey, man, come on over, put your stuff on. This is some good, you know, potential opportunity for you. And I want to do it with more people, too. But, like, what am I going to do? Find people who have, like, you know, nine subs and be like, hey, man, here you go. Go ahead, do a video on my channel. I'm not, not interested in that. Plus, if, if one of my videos gets demonetized, I know that I don't curse. I know that I don't do lewd gestures. I don't do like this, that, and the other thing. I don't do all this crazy bad stuff that I would deserve to get something demonetized. The way that, um, uh, what do you call it, YouTube's algorithms are, is that they're willing to demonetize you at the drop of a hat, and then, after some time, somebody will actually listen to you and be like, okay, we'll reinstate your monetization. But when a video, for, like especially when you're talking about a comic book review, You've got a very specified window. How many people are going to go back and look at, you know, Avengers, you know, the first issue of um, No Surrender, which was only three months ago, four, four months ago. It's just four months ago. It's only four months old. How many people are going to go back and look at that? So if that gets demonetized for the first week, the week that it comes out, I have made no money off of that video. All the time and effort that I put into that video, I get that's that's why I, I, I try not to put too much emphasis into my uh, reviews anymore because it's like they get demonetized all the time, and they always get reinstated. Meaning there was nothing ever wrong for it, but they're not going to reimburse me. It's like we didn't put videos on your your you know, your videos, so there's no money to give you. Great. So you're. Yeah, just like it was a waste of my time and a waste of your bandwidth, basically. That's And your storage. That just doesn't make any kind of sense. So, whatever. It is what it is. But uh, when they do it, it's, you know, when, when somebody else does a video on my, you know, for my channel, and I'm like, okay, cool, I'll throw it up. If YouTube decides to demonetize it, I don't even contest that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if one of the other guys does something on my video, and they, like, they drop an F-bomb or something, it's like... Well, okay, I'm doing all this editing work, I'm doing, I'm uploading it, I'm taking my time to actually put this, this video together and render it and putting it up on, um, on YouTube, on my channel, and the tags and everything that goes with it, and the links, and, oh, and I also have to, I have to be the one to make the thumbnail for it. So I'm going to get absolutely nothing out of this. They're going to get everything. They're going to get, you know, views. They're going to get, uh, they don't get paid for the views they get for this video. But, the, you know, if you like their videos, go to their channel. Check out what they do. Check out their other reviews. You know what I'm saying? But I get absolutely nothing for it if it goes, you know, demonetized. So, like, it's, it's like, okay, cool. So I'm literally, I'm getting very little out of it. What's up, Joe Fisher? How you doing, brother? Um, so... <sighs> Why did I go on that tangent? Oh, I, I hate when I do that. Anyway, so, like, like that's the deal there. So now, so now the question, I, I know I'm going to remember why I actually got into it. Anyway, so when this guy starts talking about, um, I want to I wanted get this, this role as, a, um, uh, uh, as, as Hawkeye, okay, what have you actually done to earn it? Oh, that's why I went on it. Because a lot of these guys are untested. So somebody who's only got nine views... Or, or excuse me, nine subs for his channel, and he says, hey, can I do a video on your channel also? And I've got to say no, because it's actually going to hurt him more than anything else. My first video sucked. 
my first year of videos sucked. I didn't have anything good going on on my videos. I had the worst possible videos you can imagine. They're still up. I left them up there as a lesson for people. Go back and look at how horrible they were. Look at how I changed my style based on criticism, a lot of it very non-constructive criticism, and, you know, fixed my, myself up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, got a better mic, got a bunch of everything. Um, so... When I hear people, you know, saying, oh, I want to get this, it's like, so let me get this straight. Because you're deaf, you want to take this role from an established actor who's actually doing a great job on this role so that a huge company like Marvel can give you the opportunity, quite literally, of a freaking lifetime just because you're deaf? This is not to diminish, and this is where I talk about maturity in a conversation. This is not at all to diminish. Oh, you, you don't know what it's like to be deaf. I don't know what it's like to be deaf. I know what it's like to be hard of hearing. I know what it's like to not be able to hear certain decibels of conversation because I don't think too many people here know what it's like to have uh, five, five, six bullets swing by your head when you lost your, ear, your, your hearing protection. You know what I'm saying? When I lose my hearing protection when I'm out there, and that happens all the time in the military, bullets, you have no idea. Like, when you hear about banshees screeching and things like that, dude, you have no idea how loud a freaking bullet is unless it whizzes by your ear. And if you do, now imagine it on full auto. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sweet nectar of life. <laughs> that is just great. So, um, yeah, man. Oh, Fanta, by the way, if you would like me to be a sponsor of yours oh, in a heartbeat, I'll do it at a discount. Just send me this stuff. Anyway, um, so like that could actually hurt his career more than anything else. But the thing is, if it hurts his career, it's because it's also hurting the, the, the comic book movies. It's hurting the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, here's the thing. You don't get things handed to you. You don't. The worst possible thing is to have something handed to you. That's no exaggeration. Now, this is not about privilege. Look, I am fully... Co and there, may, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to disagree with me. Sorry, but I fully believe in the concept of white privilege. I do, okay? I understand that I've got a heads up on people who were... Without getting too political, too much into identity politics, if you're... you're the history of your family is that and you might even have somebody who was potentially like like a, a direct descendant of slavery for 400 years and then 100 years of having absolutely no rights, not being recognized in the Constitution. I would be an absolute jackass if I suggested that I don't have any advantages over somebody else like that. Now, mind you, I grew up Italian. Now, a lot of people on both white and black maybe aren't going to understand this, but I grew up Italian. I did not grow up thinking I was white. I grew up understanding that I was Italian. There, I've had many black people sit there and tell me, oh, dude, you're, you're white. Don't tell me what I am. I look white to you. I blend in, whatever. But you know what? Blending in is not the, you know, in visual. The second I open my mouth, it's a very different story. I don't have that status quo about me. I don't have that in my head. I grew up Italian. I grew up with the idea that my grandfather was called the worst kind of names you can imagine. And you can imagine because you were called those exact same names. Yes, those exact same names. I grew up with those stories. I grew up with that in my head the entire time. I grew up understanding I'm not going to be treated equally. Even though I technically was, I didn't grow up with that mindset. So I grew up very differently. I grew up um, established that I am not in the establishment. Uh, I grew up, you know, feeling like I was an underdog. And it's hard to ever get rid of those perceptions when you're a kid. If you grew up a small, slight kid, and you grew up and you're a big guy, and somebody's like, hey, big man, what's up? You're going to look around like, who the heck is this guy talking to? I'm the only one here. You know, and to him, you're big! But you grew up the small guy. You filled out. You developed when you were older. So, like, that's the idea there. Um, so, you know, again, when I say just because he's deaf, please understand what I'm saying intelligently, that being deaf does not automatically give you the... the because that, that, then which deaf person? You know what I'm saying? Look, if we were to do this the way that affirmative action is, is explained, and mind you, I'm not talking about what, what your friend told you what affirmative action is, but what the actual legal definition of affirmative action is. You take two candidates, 
and and everything's come down to these two candidates and you're literally looking at the, the credentials of these two candidates and you're like I can't decide which one is a better qualified fit for the role that I'm looking to fill. I've got two perfect candidates and only one role to fill. The very last thing you look at is the affirmative action rule which says this guy grew up black, he, he's black, and this guy is white. This guy's got a better, the white guy's got a, a slightly better chance of getting a job than this guy. So you know what? I'm going to give this guy a job. That is what affirmative action is. It's the absolute final thing you look, you actually look at gender before you look at, uh, uh, what do you call it, ethnicity. I don't like to say race because we're all the human race. So I'm using that exact same concept to look back at, oh, Red Black Cane, please don't let a, another jackass be in charge. Like, you're telling me that Kanye would be better than... Uh, even Oprah would be smarter, and I still don't want Oprah. I want an actual intelligent person. Can we have Bernie Sanders or Jill Stein in charge, please? Not Kanye. Not Oprah. No more Trump. No more No more Reagans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, God, no more actors. Or, you know what? You know what? You know what I blame for Trump being president? The writer's strike. The first writer's strike. Okay? Because that gave rise to shows like The Apprentice and shows like uh, Survivor and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what gave you know rise to reality TV because the writers went on strike. I blame them. Uh, and not the writers themselves. I'm pro-union. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I grew up union. That's a thing. I had to grow up union. My father and my grandfather and on my other side, uh, my grandfather... Excuse me. All union. You had to be union members because how else are you going to get rights? Uh, you know, workers' rights against huge corporations that are like, you know, if we didn't have this minimum uh, law, minimum uh, wage law, we'd pay you a dollar an hour. My grandfather didn't qualify for minimum wage when he grew up, and he worked at a gas station for a dollar a day. Not a dollar an hour like everybody else got. A dollar a day. So what does that do? It's taking jobs away from white people. My grandfather was not considered white. He's a full-blooded Sicilian. He was never considered white. Ever. 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 So when we say that, that race is a construct, I understand that better than I think most people do. Because my grandfather was never considered white. I'm considered white. How did that happen exactly? Okay. Sorry. Comic book channel. So, talking about <laughs> actors with disabilities it is not a qualifier. Okay, for, for this job. Now, if it came down to, there's only uh, these these two, like if it came down to Jeremy Renner or this guy, who were both like, and they're like, I don't know which one to go for. Actually, they would probably go for Jeremy Reynolds anyways, because if he's willing to take this, this pay, all right, the same pay this guy is willing to take, and he's a, uh, what do you call, he's a more famous actor, but let's say this other guy was just as famous, but he's also deaf. Okay, then... Then I would say, if they're both fully equal in every way, fine. Go with the deaf guy. But if not, I just, I don't see that as being a qualifier for a role. I don't. And if we need any further proof, I saw that, I think it was Red Black Cane mentioned Daredevil at one point. So, do we get a, a blind person to play Daredevil? Do we? Hey, person who's playing Daredevil, I need you to jump from here to here. I'm sorry, where to where? That sounds really mean, right? And, uh, and again, it's supposed to be taken in jest, but let's just look at it intelligently. What is this guy supposed to be able to do? What's this guy supposed to do? Like, you can't have somebody jumping from here to here when there's any kind of danger whatsoever. The guy can't see. That would be asinine. That would be asinine. Anybody who's going to, like, legitimately, if you're doing a joke, ha, 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 shh. But, um, like, seriously, that's funny. But, like, if you're actually going to try and argue, no, deaf, uh, blind people could do everything that, that, that seeing people can do. No. No. They can't. If I lost my eyesight for whatever reason, or I couldn't, actually, I couldn't be, you know what? That's, that's perfect right there. I am extremely nearsighted. Like, extremely nearsighted. The 500-yard targets in the army, I can't see them when they're stationary. You know what allows me to hit them every single time? It's because I see the motion. I see the motion. I've got great depth perception in that regard that I can look and I can see where something moved. I can, remember, I can train my, my rifle on it. 
and remember exactly where it stood up and they stay up for 10 seconds. The ones that are only 50 meters away only stay up for three seconds. It's like, boop, boom, boop, it goes down with the bullet or after three seconds if you missed. And this is live fire. But the 500 meter ones stay up for 10 seconds. And there's like the, the 50 meter, the 100 meter, the 150 meter, 200, 300, and so forth, all the way back to 500 meters. Uh, a meter is about three and a half feet. Um, so 500 meters is like about 1,500 feet away. And I can hit that sucker every single time. I qualified expert. And the only reason why I was able to hit those 500 meter targets is because they move. If they were stationary targets, psh, I wouldn't have qualified expert every single time. So <laughs> I, would, I think sharpshooter is the next one and marksman is the minimum one. Anyway, um, look, I want you to just think about, like I just saw the Joe Rogan podcast yesterday, I think it was, where they talk about the difference between the military and college. <coughs> Anybody can get into college anybody. Oh, you might not get into the university that you want to get into. Hey, what's going on, Nerd to Doug? You may not be able to get into the, 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 the university that you want to. You may not be able to qualify for Oxford, but let's be realistic. Anybody, and I mean anybody, who sits around playing video games, has a low IQ because he's, he's too busy screwing around, doesn't want to read a book, can't actually read anything past 140 characters, or 280 now because Twitter has doubled its length, can't pay attention enough to read an actual book, has no sort of cognitive abilities because it's always, yeah, mom, I'm not listening. You know what I'm saying? Has no sense of responsibility because they grew up in a single parent household and you don't have that discipline. In fact, I just had this conversation with my wife yesterday. My son said something to me. Uh, or he was he was like rude with me. I took him out the whole day, my, my oldest son. I took him out the whole day and he, he was mean to me at night and didn't want to give me a hug good night. I said, all right, bud, here's the deal. I'm not taking you out tomorrow. I did. Um, but I'm not taking you out tomorrow, okay? We're not going out tomorrow and... The toys that you like to play with, those Paw Patrol toys, I'm going to play with them tomorrow, not you. Because I bought them for you, you don't get to play with them now. So he was, he was really upset about that. And I wanted to go into it more, but my wife got really upset at me. And I was like, all right, now go to bed. And she's like, what? I was like, please wait until the door closes before we can have our little argument. And we actually had an argument where I'm sitting here talking. She's like, how could you be so mean to him? I was like, babe, here's the deal. Women have a mother's have unconditional love. Fathers do not. Fathers have very conditional love, and children need both. Children desperately need both. So, yeah, I, I, I don't, I'll talk about my, my personal life. I don't care. It's me. Um, <laughs> children need both. So they need that unrequited, unearned love from the mother to know it's always there. Someone will always love you. You shot JFK? It's okay, son. I still love you. Kids need that. But kids also need, I'm disappointed with you, you go to bed, I don't want to talk to you now, try again tomorrow. Kids need that too, boys and girls, they need that also. And my wife has a hard time understanding that. I say, but I don't have a hard time understanding your, you know, unrequited love where you just give, 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 and there's no, there's no, you know, trying to earn anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, kids need both. They need both. There's a reason why it's both there. And it's not a masculinity, femininity thing. It kind of is, but it's also not. It's just the idea of kids need both for their development. We can't grow up in some kind of cultured, sheltered world. Because then all of a sudden, we were just talking about him, all of a sudden somebody like Trump comes along and everybody loses their crap and nobody knows what to do about, you know, Trump anymore. He's a bully. He's saying words and I have no safe place anymore. Yeah, welcome to the real world. Call my mother effer, flip him off, and walk away and laugh at his dumb, short, small-handed self. Who cares? Who cares that, he's, that he called you fat or he called you ugly or he called you whatever he's going to call Trump called you stupid? That's a joke right in itself. So, like, who cares? Who cares? It's not about grow a thick skin. It's about actually have some skin. I understand that some people can be hurt. Post-traumatic stress is not just something for, you know, people who are in the military. Lots of people have post-traumatic stress. I used to teach uh, women self-defense. Do you know how many women I have had to deal with who have not just been attacked by men, but who have actually had that next level? Like, do I want to say that word? The R word? I've known women who have had that happen to them, and I couldn't imagine something like that. 
I could I, I can't put myself into that kind of a place. But because I did take sociology when I was in, in, in college, was my first uh, that was my associate's degree. Was that was my two year degree? Was in sociology. I understand that sucks. And if you want to help, shut your mouth. Don't try and, and explain things to her. Just shut your mouth and listen for anything that she wants to tell you, and then try and get her to, to participate. That's it. That's it. Like it's 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 hard. Stress happens to everybody. I get it. But the idea of somebody said something that I don't like. <gasps> Come on, man. Come on. Ah, <laughs> like so. So there's my deal. There's my deal. Like as much as I keep on, all of this is kind of like the underlying, you know, uh, terminology here. The idea of don't be so politically correct. Look, this guy thinks that Jeremy Renner should be fired. At the heart of it, that's what he thinks. Jeremy Renner should be fired, and this guy should be allowed to play Hawkeye. Why? The only reason he gives is because he's deaf. Sorry. That's not a good, re- good enough reason for me to fire this guy. If, if we decide, hey man, Jeremy Renner uh, is gone, and like all of the cast is gone, we're going to reboot the Marvel Cinematic Universe, now you can go ahead and apply. Now you go ahead and reapply. Because I got news for you. Fantastic Four is coming over. And while Hawkeye is 80% deaf, Ben Grimm is 20% deaf. Maybe it's 40%. Either way, it's hard for him to hear certain frequencies because all the rocks in his, literally, in his head, well, around his head. So he's actually very hard of hearing. A lot of people don't know that about the comic books. That's why I'm the professor. But he's actually kind of hard of hearing. Sonic attacks don't work on him as well. You know, whenever Claw would do his sonic beam, uh, he'd be like, Psh, I got this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't hurt him as much. Uh, so, hey, go for that role, maybe. But you don't get a role just because, you know, whatever. Like, this kind of goes back to me with the whole idea of Iron Fist. People attacked Iron Fist. Look, the guy who was playing Iron Fist is not a particularly great actor. He doesn't really look the role very much. Like, he could have done a couple more push-ups, you know, maybe built up his pecs a little bit more. You know, say, like, Iron Fist, you look at him, he's, rah, he's tight, a lot tighter than I am. That dude is taut. But to come up and just talk about, you know, like, oh, but he's not Asian, and this is cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation? I learned martial arts since I was eight years old. I'm teaching my son martial arts. Kid just turned, or actually, he's not even five yet. Not even five. I've been teaching him martial arts for the past four or five months. I've been teaching my son knows how to throw a punch, knows how to throw a combination, knows how to duck when a hand's coming to him, knows how to hit a bag, knows how to put on a pair of gloves. I just started teaching him how to, how to kick to the body. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm teaching this kid the martial arts. He's not Asian. I'm not Asian. Is that cultural appropriation? What does that mean? The whole, your, your prom dress, or my, what is it? My, my culture is not your prom dress. Shut up. Because what that is, look, if she's sitting there and she's just like making fun of it, oh look, I'm an Indian, okay, then she's stupid and yeah, she should have a drink thrown on her. And I'm being genuinely serious about that. Throw a drink on her. Really get her to think about what she's doing. Try not to go for the eyes because that could be considered assault. But uh, if she's just wearing it because she thinks it looks really cool, she doesn't have to learn about your culture, dude. She doesn't have to. Nobody has to. All right? It's just, like, that's just asinine. You can wear something out of respect for how cool it looks. Why can't you? Why, why banning someone from wearing something because they're not the right um, ethnicity? Oh, enough. Enough of this with this, this fake microaggression nonsense, man. I'm Italian. I'm Italian. I talk with my hands. That's right. I'm stereotyping the heck out of myself. There's going to be people who are like, you're, you're talking with... And thank God nobody's ever done that because I would butcher that person. You know what I'm saying? But like, dude, and I'm sitting here talking, and like this guy goes and says to me, and I'm like, are, are you kidding me? Like, I'm sitting here having a conversation. And then if somebody ever said, you're using your hands a lot, there's a lot of microaggressions, I'd be like, really? Let me show you a microaggression. Read between the lines. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to play around with that guy. Like, I'm not going to sit here and try and... It's like, dude, if you got, like, some kind of a, you know, a problem where you have something like that, walk away. Because I'm here, in this spot, having a conversation with these people, and if you don't like it, you walk away. Don't censor me. Don't censor me. Get out of here. All right? Freedom of speech, man. And mind you, when I said I love George Orwell, 
I do love George Orwell, 1984, Freedom of Speech. Don't try with your thought control by controlling my speech so that I'm, I'm too busy thinking about what's the right thing to say that's going to fit within your context of how things... That's not a real argument. Me, if you don't like my speech, give me better speech. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, what do you call it? So, so, so there's that. But I also do understand Animal Farm. He wrote more than one book. I understand Animal Farm. Hey, all animals are created equally, but some animals are more equal than others. I understand that concept also. But don't try and limit my speech because I'm saying things that you consider to be against whatever. So, yes, I generally think that this guy who, who's saying that the main qualifier, why he should get Jeremy Renard's role, an established actor's role, is because he's deaf, needs to shut up. He literally needs to take the video down. Actually, he can keep the video up. Just be, be aware, you're going to get criticized, brother. You're going to get criticized because you're saying something really stupid. Give me Jamie, uh, Jeremy Renner's role because he's not deaf and I am. Sorry, brother. That is not the first qualifier. That is maybe the last qualifier. If you meet every other expectation that Jeremy Renner is able to meet, then you can actually be in the conversation. Until then, sorry, brother. I'm not going to I'm not gonna hear it. <laughs> That actually sounds meaner than I meant it to be. Anyway, so, Big League. Oh, my God, <laughs> not Big League. It's actually Big League. Uh, no way, Charlie Cox is an awesome daredevil. Exactly, he's an awesome daredevil. He doesn't have to be blind to be, um, whatever. Um, Bernie, uh, Clint Mack says, uh, Bernie will die a senator. He needs a president to work with. Maybe. That's why I think that Jill Stein would be better, but that's my personal political opinion. Um, I don't want Bernie Sanders as a leader. I think that, I don't know how he is against the corporate war machine, and this is this is one of the reasons why I say, um, oh, this actually, yeah, what I was talking about before. The guy that was on, what's his face, is, um, um, what's his face, Joe Rogan's podcast yesterday, I think it was yesterday, was um, this dude who was talking about the military. He says, um, Exactly, Clint Mack. Your disability should never be a qualifier. You're an actor. Your acting should be uh, your qualifier. So, um, like, literally, I could not say it better myself. Poe near the castle. I love that name. Uh, I took the backlash on Iron Fist as an extension of the starring John Cho campaign, where the the movement was that someone like John Cho can meet the expectations of a leading man. Um, possibly. But Iron Fist in the comic books was a white guy. And like I kept on saying when that, when that movie was, or when the TV show was getting ready to come out, the Netflix series was getting ready to come out, I said, Iron Fist was for the most part this white guy who was constantly getting things wrong. And people were, like the other Kun Laoians were constantly telling him, dude, you're kind of an idiot. You're like the worst Iron Fist ever. Do we really want an Asian guy taking that role so that people can constantly berate him and say, dude, you're an idiot, you're the worst Iron Fist ever? No. We've got Shang-Chi. Hopefully they're going to actually put Shang-Chi in the season two. And if they play him right, Shang-Chi will be the guy that says, dude, you've got great power with that Iron Fist and all that stuff, but you're an idiot. Let me show you how to actually use it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I want to see. I want to see, like... Shang-Chi doesn't have any superpowers. Shang-Chi is just an amazing Bruce Lee style. He was modeled after Bruce Lee. Um, fighter. He, he's as organic as organic gets. He could beat uh, Iron Fist in a fight. No joke. No. Well, in, in a hundred fights, in a hundred fights, he would win a hundred times. He's a much better martial artist, a much better fighter than uh, Iron Fist. So I would want to see Shang-Chi show up and actually teach Iron Fist how much he doesn't really know. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to see. And, and the fact that he happens to be Asian would, would help out, of course. Now, if they put a white guy in that role, I'm going to be right alongside you on the picket lines. I will not be watching that show, but like, you, you guys are idiots. You know what I'm saying? You're telling me in all of China, you can't find a Chinese actor to play in that role? Come on! So... There we go. Anyway, um, uh, what do you call it? So, uh, oh, I was actually going to get to some of these comments because I was kind of skipping on the comments. Oh, um, balance is key. Balance is key. Uh, Jesse Johnson. Clint Max. Some mothers abandon their children. It's rare, but it's real. Okay, I totally missed where that was supposed to go, but yes, you're right. I hear you. It does actually happen. 
Uh, somebody actually just uh, a couple days ago said, um, um, what do you call it? Oh, I know where that where that goes. Okay, and I hear you. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Um, somebody just said, I think it was yesterday, a friend of mine on uh, on Facebook. I actually knew her in real life, and then we became Facebook friends. Um, she said, I don't understand how some parents can accidentally forget their kids are in the car. But she doesn't have kids. Like, I know she doesn't have kids. I get it. I get you're curious. There's a right way and a wrong way to ask that question. If you're going to say it as an accusation, it's kind of wrong. You know what I'm saying? And a couple people called her out. I didn't need to. A couple people called her out on it. And she's like, okay. I just, and she did mean it maliciously. You know what I'm saying? But there were a bunch of people who got on there. Her friends who were like, I actually forgot little Johnny or whatever their kids' names are in the car once. Like, I was rushing around all over the place. And I just, like, I just forgot him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it actually does happen. Look, we all have to understand that we're all different. We all have to understand that we're not all born on the same starting line, all right? Somebody who's born with mental handicaps, you're telling me they're born on the same starting line that the rest of us are, are born on? Somebody who's born with a physical deformity, they're born on the same starting line? Because even if they are born on the same starting line, they're not going to have the same uh, race that the rest of us are going to have. And there are people who are born and they can't help it. They can't help it. They just, they're not going to have the same IQ as some other people, all right? Uh, there are people who are born with a really high IQ, and there are people born with a really low IQ. You know what I'm saying? And like, this is the kind of thing that, that the guy on Joe Rogan's podcast was talking about, is that you will have people who, um, you know, anybody, for the most part, anybody can get into college. You can go into a private college, like a for-profit um, private college, uh, like DeVry. Like DeVry, you know, I went to DeVry University. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not university. DeVry Institute. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we don't have a standard uh, bachelor's of electrical engineering. Whenever somebody says, oh, uh, what'd you get for your engineering degree? Oh, I got a bachelor's in engineering. I don't actually have a bachelor's in engineering. I have a bachelor's in, um, what the hell they call it? Uh, in electrical technology, something to that, to that engineering technology or something like that. So it sounds differently. They do that on purpose because they're not, they're accredited. Oh, they are accredited, but they're not a federally financed institution, even though they are taking government money through student loans. You know what I'm saying? They still qualify for student loans. So they're fully accredited. But the idea is, it's easier for me to just say, yeah, I have a bachelor's in engineering. When they actually see my transcripts and they look at it, it's like, this doesn't say that. If you're actually in the engineering field, you understand, because you've dealt with many people from DeVry, and you do understand, you have had more on, the, on hand uh, 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 experience. You haven't, you haven't wasted your time learning only theory. You did theory in practice. You did applied theory. Boom, right there. Um, so I actually have a lot more hands-on training than anybody else, I think, maybe not somebody from MIT, maybe not somebody from like ITT, but then most people from most colleges who got a degree, an actual engineering degree. So I have the equivalent and then some of an engineering degree. I'm really out of practice, you know what I'm saying? Um, I probably couldn't, I don't even think I can remember all the colors on a, 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 a standard resistor, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'd much rather go with the tantalum resistors, but the idea is that, you know what I'm saying, you, sometimes you just, you're going to just like throw this in there. But the idea is that anybody can get into a private institution. Anybody. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to pass? That's up to you. But anybody can get in. Anybody can get a student loan and get in. Anybody can sign up the FAFSA forms, you know, the federal application for a student loan, you know, all that stuff, and, and get into one of those colleges. Anybody can go into a, a state college. Anybody can go into a local college. You're talking about a, a, a bigger college, like an Ivy League university. That's going to be a lot harder to do. You've got to actually seek acceptance. But something like, you know, your local community college, anybody can get into a college. Anybody can get a master's degree if you're actually trying for it. So the guy who's literally, he eats Frito-Lays all day or Cheetos and he's overweight and he can't see very far and he needs his glasses and if he doesn't have his glasses, he can't see to save his life. And you know, you, you, you uh, what do you call it? You're just not that smart because you did play silly video games all your life. You didn't listen to your parents. You didn't do half the stuff that you were supposed to do in life. You can still get into college. Can you get into the military? Absolutely not. We have an IQ test it's called the ASVAB. If you cannot pass the minimum for the ASVAB, which means you have to have at least a 100 IQ, 100 is average. If you have a 99 IQ or lower, 
You're talking about heavy machinery and guns and things like that, dude. Weapons of mass destruction. No. You can be disqualified from the military. You can't be disqualified for college for having a low IQ. You can be disqualified from military. If you're fat, you know what I'm saying? As rude as it sounds. If you are morbidly obese, if you are a little bit obese, if you don't make the tape test, meaning they check your neck and they check your waist and all that stuff. They didn't have to do that with me because I was actually, I, 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 I grew up, I was in the track and field team. I threw shot put, I threw discus, I was horrible at the javelin, um, but shot put and discus, and I ran cross country. You know what I'm saying? I was in great shape, you know what I'm saying, in high school. So when 17 years old, I signed up for the military, like, yeah, uh, can you drop on your knees without hurting yourself? Yes. If you can't, if you have bad knees, which is a genetic disorder, you are not responsible for this. Guess what? You can't join the military. If you've got bad eyesight and it can't be corrected with glasses, you're done. I'm going to tell you a really cool thing. In the military, we have what's called BCGs birth control glasses. That's what they're called. The, the, the big, thick uh, glasses that you get that you get assigned in the military that, so that they can't break very easily and things like that, they're called BCG. The, the nickname we give are BCGs, birth control glasses. Why? Because ain't nobody getting laid wearing those glasses. <laughs> that's the joke that we have. And that's how hard we rib people. That's like light. But we rib people hard all the time, man. We are merciless in the military. You know what I'm saying? We crack jokes at each other all the time. Forget about it. Racial slurs. You name it. Yes. You will hear it in the military. Other people just aren't going to understand that if you weren't in. You know what I'm saying? But there are so many disqualifiers for the military. There are none for standard college. And that was a really good point to make in that podcast. It was a great one. Clint Mack, you're an army brat. Uh, you grew up with BCGs. <laughs> I love you, man. Um, uh, Eduardo Negron, what's going on, dude? If you don't pass PT test, you're at, Exactly. If you don't pass the PT test, you go to what's called FIT. I can't remember exactly what that's called, but the, the, that uh, initially, it's not an acronym because we don't call it FIT. But you could call it fit, but uh, otherwise it's just a, uh, an uh, initialization, uh, FIT, uh, an abbreviation. No, it wouldn't be an abbreviation, it would be an uh, initialization. Anyway, FIT. We always called it FAT. <laughs> just because, like I said, it's like, uh, you're too fat for the military, you can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you guys um, a joke that we do, okay? I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to let you in on a hazing practice that we do in the military. And here's something where a lot of you guys aren't going to understand, and a lot of you guys gonna, who weren't in the military, you're going to say, no, nah, I, would, I would kill somebody. I would kill somebody. You can't. You can't. Here's something that we do in the military. Oh, and I got very lucky on this. I had a whole bunch of friends in basic training. When I got in, I had some serious friends. We already had our stencil. We stenciled the thing. Everybody was calling me private uh, kung fu. You know what I'm saying? Because I, uh, I was a private, and I knew karate. So they called. They, they wanted to say private Confucius because I would always spout philosophy, and I would always talk about the martial arts. And uh, they didn't know how to spell Confucius, so they called me Private Kung Fu instead. Which is funny, because the Latinized version of Kung Fu, uh, Kung his name was actually Kung Fu they said Confucius, and that's actually where Kung Fu comes from. Yeah, no joke. It's actually Gung Fu in China, in, in Chinese. So that's actually funny how the Latinized version comes over. But anyway, um, they called me Private Kung Fu. Stenciled it in my bags. I was away getting my eye check, and I failed. I was supposed to go in for infantry, and I failed my eye test. They put the, the eye drops in so that my eyes would dilate, and I had to walk home like this because my eyes were fully dilated. It was daytime. It was Fort Benning, Georgia. And I couldn't see. The sun was too bright. But my eyes fully dilated. And it was going to be like that for hours. So I'm walking back to barracks trying to see. And I've only been there for like four days. So trying to find my way back. I didn't know where I was going. Tears flowing down my eyes. People looking at me like I'm crying. A captain walked by. And, uh, and I didn't salute. And he's like, uh, soldier, where are you from? And he's like dressing me down. I'm like, sir, I can't see. Because I didn't salute him. And he's, a, he's dressing me down because I didn't salute him. And it's like, I can't see you. I can't see your rank. I can't see you. Like, I can't see. Could somebody please help me get home? Sergeant, or uh, soldier, home. You left that when you signed up your recruiter. To get back to your barracks, you just keep walking straight. And that was it. And he walked away. No help. <laughs> but I made it back. <laughs> but while I was away, they were doing the stenciling to put it on our, on our rucksacks, our duffel bags. 
not our rucksacks, on our duffel bags. So anyway, they put Private Kung Fu for mine. That was cool. And we had, I named this one guy Private Lunchbox because he talked about how he, he beat some kid up with his lunchbox. So like, your Private Lunchbox, done. I gave him his name. And we all had our little names. We joked around. And all of these guys went through this hazing while I was away. So when I came back, you're like, yo, Kung Fu, check it. You can't go in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's what you do. If you go in the regular line to get in, bad things are going to happen. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen. What you're going to do instead is you're going to go up to the front of the line and whisper to the guy, I was already in here. I just want to come back in. Okay? Go do that. I was like, all right, cool. So I didn't know if they were trying to get me on that. Anyway, I decided to go walking in. So I walk up. I was like, hey, uh, I've already been in here, and, you know, I, I just want to get back in. I want to, I want to see what's up. Like, you were already in here? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, all right, shh, hurry up, come in. So he, like, ushered me in really quick. Like, I'm going in here to be attacked, aren't I? And I just walked in, and nobody told me stand over here or anything. So I was like, okay, let me go over here. So they were doing what's called ranger push-ups. Uh, excuse me, no, ranger sit-ups. Now, we've already done the ranger push-ups, okay? Ranger push-ups are difficult. You've done a regular push-up before, right? A regular push-up, you have to keep your body completely straight and your head forward, your chin actually up so that if you drop on the ground, you pop on your chin, you know what I'm saying? And you got to make sure you break the plane so that when you come down for a push-up, your elbows are going to go higher than your shoulders. Just a little bit even. Your chest doesn't actually have to touch the ground, but you have to break that plane. Your elbows have to go higher than your shoulders. That is one. Then you can come back fully up. Two. That's fully up. If you just do one of these, it doesn't count. It's literally one, 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 one. They don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Break the plane, soldier. Break the plane. Well, you have to break the plane in a push-up while your feet to feet with another soldier and then you crawl back towards each other and you wrap your legs and he wraps his legs around each other's waists so neither of your feet are on the ground only your two hands and his two hands you both go down as one you both go up as one it is one of the most difficult things you'll ever do but in the army in the infantry at least we are really good at doing that mind you i didn't get to go into infantry that turn. I instead got turned away and said, you can't see, you can't be infantry. What do you want to do? One of the things on the list was a truck driver. So out of spite, instead of actually learning something good, you know what I'm saying, like bricklaying or something, that was one of, they offered me a lot of things. They offered me officer candidate school for the second time. Actually, that's where they were supposed to, they were supposed to do it before, but they offered because my ASVAB was actually really high. They said, you can go to officer, can OCS, you can go to officer candidate school. I was like, I don't want to be an officer. Truck driver, you won't let me shoot a gun? Put me behind the, the wheel of a 18 wheeler. I actually got behind the wheel, uh, the wheel of a 22 wheeler with two trailers. That was fun, hauling Bradley tanks. We actually used those at the time. Anyway, I just did it out of spite. And then I got out and then I went to my, uh, my base, but my unit was a, uh, my, my entire uh, battalion was actually uh, an infantry battalion. So, like, what is this? Truck driver? Uh uh. They made a couple phone calls and sent me back just for infantry school. I got my infantry tab and then came back. It's like, I should have just called you guys directly. So I got truck driving, MOS, uh, which is MOS uh, 88 Mike, and then I got my 11 Bravo immediately afterwards. So I've got two, two MOSs. Anyway, so I'm in this room, and they're like, oh, we're going to do the Ranger sit-ups. I was like, the Ranger push-ups? No, the Ranger sit-ups. Okay, let's see what this is all about. This has to be hard. So, <clears throat> they're only letting one person in at a time, and that should have been the hint that this was going to be something really bad. They let one person in at a time, and he lays down, and he has to put his feet up and, and his hands underneath his butt cheeks. Now, mind you, most soldiers are not going to tell you this stuff. I'll get to the segment, dude. Calm down, all right? I'm telling you about the ranger sit-up. <clears throat> so, you have to put the hands underneath the butt, <laughs> and uh, you have to try and, and do a regular sit-up, where your chest touches your knees because your knees are, are you know elevated but somebody is going to one somebody's going to be holding down your feet and the other thing is somebody's going to take a towel and hold down your head so the towel is folded up put across your face meaning your eyes and your nose and they're going to hold down as hard as they can and lean into it and you have to use all of your torso muscles to lift yourself all the way up sounds really hard right that's not the niche the niche is, and there's going to be a lot of army people who are pissed off at me for telling you this because we're not supposed to, you know, break into this. But again, if you can't understand this, you'll understand why we don't talk about our, our service, you know, overseas and stuff like that. Because you can't handle this, you definitely can't handle that. <clears throat> so, when they're laying there, they make sure you're actually trying to get up. Like, hold on, dude, I lost my grip on the towel. 
It's like, okay, cool. So you, you lay back down, you get a breather, and they're like, okay, seriously, everything you got into this one, soldier, go! So he pushes up as hard as he possibly can. As he's doing that, another guy jumps in out of nowhere, straddles the other guy. He doesn't know, the guy who's on the ground doesn't realize this, straddles him, pulls down his pants, and sticks out his butt towards this guy's face. The other guy holding the towel lets go of the towel. What do you think happens? Nose, meet brown eye. Yes. And then he gets up and he's like, oh, what the heck? And he's like, whoa, calm down, man. You passed. You did a good job. Relax. You've just been hazed. And it's like, oh, so you okay, man? You going to be okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where's the, where's the, where's the latrine? <laughs> He's like, it's right over there. Good job, man. You like, you got a good, you know, you got a not a good heart. What is it like, you know, uh, whatever. You got a good head on your shoulders. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got hazed. You're embarrassed. Ha ha ha. Deal with it. You know what I'm saying? We're soldiers. We're gonna go through a hell of a lot worse. That's not the drill sergeants that do that. That's just the guys who have been on holdover or have been there longer. That's literally the crazy stuff that we do in the military. Like that's the kind of hazing crap that we do in the military. We're dumb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's like. We can lose our lives at any freaking moment. When you're in the infantry, you can lose your lives at any freaking moment. That's the kind of stupid stuff that we do. So, yeah, it's it's hard to insult a military guy. You know what I'm saying? Unless you've had your... And I, uh, fortunately, I didn't actually have that happen to me, but I saw it, and I learned from it. You know, I like to learn from the mistakes of others. You know what I'm saying? But, like, like I learned that. It's like, yeah, if that would have happened, if I would have gotten mad and hit somebody, all of a sudden, I get in trouble because no drill sergeant is going to blame this guy for just having fun and making a joke. But I am definitely going to get in trouble for punching somebody. So, like, you learn to just be cool. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a weird kind of thing. Okay, Sean, let's get to this segment. <laughs> Uh, let's crack this puppy open. Let's get a quick swag. Uh, Edward Negron. He did not tell. Uh, he did not tell. Know where the barracks is. Officers are always lost. You're right. You are 100 percent right. I'm positive that officer didn't know where I was going. <laughs> Forensic mechanic. Um, cool. If you don't, uh, I liked Iron Fist Defenders shows on Netflix. Backlash and Iron Fist. Iron Fist was okay. They were doing it. Truman says uh, they're insanely impossible moves. They made the show look lame. Oh, I 100% agree. No, I have not seen The Accountant. Uh, Affleck always plays a badass statistic soldier. I didn't read your comment, but my wife was actually showing me the comment while we were sitting out there. I didn't actually look at their Facebook page yet, and I didn't realize that she actually posted that. She posted that right before I actually left. Having two parents and balanced parenting is something I definitely agree with the professor on. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Nerditor Doug. Okay, so let's get back down here. That sounds terrible. Minimum <laughs> minimum PT. Uh, hey, Suzanne. Yeah, it's, um, it's terrible-ish. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. You, you have to grow a tough skin in the military. Because, like, that's the big thing. What if you ever get captured? You know what I'm saying? If you ever get captured behind enemy lines and you get tortured, having your butt in another dude's face for a brief moment is nothing compared to what you're actually going to have to go through. You know what I'm saying? Like, I despise John McCain for being, like, the biggest war... He's a bigger war hawk than Hillary Clinton is, and she never met a war she didn't like. She still goes to, to before the Senate uh, with Henry Kissinger talking about different ways to take over different countries and things like that, laughing when uh, Gaddafi was was killed in, in the bombings that she was uh, she was all behind, laughing when all she wanted to do was switch to a, a completely different uh, monetary system than the U.S. petrodollar. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, oh, horrible, horrible people. And John McCain, a terrible human being. But I can't deny that he is a war hero. He absolutely, he was a prisoner of war. He did, once they figured out that he, he was the son of an admiral, they were in the Hanoi Hilton. They were like, uh, we're willing to let you go. And he says, are you going to let my, my fellow soldiers go? My men go also? He said, no, we're not going to let them go, only you. He says, well, then I'll stay. And he stayed for another four years. That's a war hero. That's a war hero. That's like he, Trump saying the things that he said about him. Anything else you want to say about him, fine, but not that. That's just unacceptable. Okay, I think we're here. Okay, yes, for podcast today. Extermination number two. What the heck is this? This is from Marvel? Oh! Is this... Okay, this actually looks weird. Look at this. Everybody is dressed up as a hound. 
everybody is dressed up as a hound in this. Look at that. You know, um, Phoenix, I just showed you the picture of Phoenix. Uh, by that I mean Rachel Summers, Rachel Gray. That's actually pretty interesting. I'm sure that's just a... That's, uh, here's the uh, Spider Geddon, uh, Porky Pig and Lex Luthor, Daffy Duck and uh, the, the Joker. That's great. Uh, oh, the Immortal Hulk issue number one. Oh, the Midtown Comics release. Uh, that's awesome that Midtown Comics gets its own covers. And I think Gotham Central should get its own uh, covers also. Why not? If they're the biggest in uh, in Canada, why not? Oh, Aquaman number 39. The art does not look very great for this cover, but the Suicide Squad with Aquaman. Cool. Okay, I'm digging it. I want to see him take these suckers down. <sighs> Infinity Wars number two. Yeah, we got to find out who this dude is. And it looks like a whole bunch of Marvel heroes who have been... That is really blurry. There we go. Who have been changed like the Horsemen of Apocalypse. That's kind of cool. I'm digging that. Um, blah, blah, blah. There's a Venom. There's a Spider-Man variant. And that's it. Spider-Man balloon going wrong. That's just weird. Oh, my battery's about to die. Spider-Man balloon going wrong. Okay, so... That was Ahab? Who's Ahab? Oh, is that the new guy? Like, hold on, do you, Joe Fisher, do you know who the main bad guy is in that? Uh, Edward Negron, TriStar got the license for Infidel. Oh, for the comic Infidel, really? Okay, I need to know who TriStar is, and uh, yeah, what's up with that? I need to know what's going on with that. Please explain more. Uh, school shooting happened at a close city to me. Uh, yeah, you're in Houston, so that was really down south, Sean. I'm sorry, man. I'm really sorry. Yeah, that's a messed up thing. I'm actually wondering when the NRA and all them are going to start uh, blasting those victims, those kids and whatnot, because you know that's going to wind up happening soon. The first day, it's all prayers and God and blah, 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 but yeah. Uh, Ahab is the guy who controls the hounds. Okay, interesting, interesting. Digging it. Uh, what do we got here? Red, black, cane. Compared to getting skinned cut, dismembered, uh, that's nothing. You're right. Yeah, exactly. You know, all the bad things that can happen over there. Uh, Suzanne, oh, awesome cover. Also, I honestly am a softie that doesn't take much to shock me. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, we need softies in the world, too. Literally. Like, we need everybody in the world. Um, Ahab is an alternate future version of Rory Campbell. Okay, I don't know who Rory Campbell is, so shoot, let me uh, actually say that. Man, it's been two hours. Yeah, I know, and you always leave after the, uh, the thing anyway. So, I'm going to actually bounce. I'm going to read a comic book. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's the comic book that I'm going to... Uh, actually, the four-issued limited series that I'm going to be doing for um, the Spotlight on Story. Hint, hint, it is totally Dungeons & Dragons related. That's it. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's something I haven't reviewed before, so I guess I'm going to tell you that. But I'm going to be reviewing a Dungeons & Dragons comic book for my Spotlight on Story. And I'm obviously going to have to make a an explained in a minute for it. And this character has been a very, very long time coming. That's all I got for you. So, uh, Rachel kissed 616 Rory. What? <laughs> um, uh, Neozani... Pukes should not be... Oh, neo-Nazi puke should not be ignored, especially in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I'm also not a fan of both sides calling each other Nazis. Um, unless somebody actually ascribes to it. That's not cool. Rory Campbell was a doctor and gifted. Oh. Okay. So, I just saved the name. I just did a, uh, a copy, and now I'm going to paste it once I uh, leave you guys. I've got a whole bunch... I've got, like, more than... I think I got like 15 comments I've got to respond to on Facebook, uh, excuse me, on uh, YouTube and a bunch of uh, things. I didn't even check my Facebook yet and I've got my two main emails that I need to check. All right, so I am out. Uh, also, guys, if you know anybody who does um, web pages and wants to, uh, this is a paid position, mind you, paid position, somebody who wants to actually um, uh finish up like work on my web page and actually keep it running because i 
don't know if I could do the day to day on that, but we'll see. Uh, by all means, please let me know. <laughs> Drop me a right on the front of my uh, YouTube page. You'll see uh, like, oh, here's your, you know, this contact, uh, my Twitter contact information and my email I information. Go there, check it out. TriStar Bay Terminator. Okay, cool. Oh, so Infidel could actually be a movie. Sweet, sweet. Thank you, Edward. Keep up the great work, Bill. Thank you. Hopefully, I get a. Uh, uh, go. Don't, don't forget to check out my Facebook page. So you might did a video with the link in it, so you can actually do your own reviews for the uh, for comic books if you want. You can throw up your you literally if you have a video review or you want to do a written view. You have a blog. You have a fandom page. You have any kind of a page that you want to uh, put up. By all means, put up your information on my comic book university Facebook page. Have fun. Uh, if you want to blast somebody, I, I, I'd prefer if you didn't blast somebody because it's mean, but I'm not here to limit you and be like, oh, you said words that I don't approve of. You're going to either temper yourself or you're not. I'm not here to be your, you know, your watchdog or your daddy. So, you know, just be nice to each other and yourselves. That's what Jerry Springer used to always say, right? I bet she still says. I bet she's still on TV. Anyway, I haven't had cable TV since 2011. <laughs> so, all right, I'm out. Oh, I said one bull square. I didn't realize you were still here. What's going on, brother? Uh, good night, Sheboygan. <laughs> that actually sounds kind of cool. All right. Um, wow, how rude. <laughs> but I'm okay with it, Clint. Uh, we all who we are. Okay, so I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for the interactions. Professor Bill uh, from Joe Fisher, that story you have with uh, Days of Future, something in another annual, is four story with Ahab. Not sure if he was the first shown in the comics. Okay, I'm going to have to definitely check that out. Oops, four parts. Are, no, I, I, I know what you meant. Okay, I'm going to actually check that out now. All right, guys, thanks for showing up. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Take it easy, guys. Class